So this is an XFCE Alpine desktop, and I've got this installed on one of my Docker servers. And you may ask yourself why somebody would install a desktop on a server system. And the reality is sometimes I'm lazy and I don't want to do things through command line. Sometimes it's nice to just navigate through files and folders through a GUI system. So that's what I've done here. And today I wanna to show you how I did it, as well as some of the different options you've got uh, to go ahead and deploy different versions of this desktop. So here we are on Linux servers, web top uh, hub.docker.com page. Uh, this will be linked in the description uh, down below as per usual. And if we scroll down, of course, there's a ton of different ways that you can find them. Uh, if we scroll down a little further, it says WebTop is an Alpine and Ubuntu based container containing full desktop environments in officially supported flavors accessible via any modern web browser. So uh, this is a cool way. This uses uh, something called guacamole to uh, connect to a remote system and uh, throw a desktop on it for easier interaction. So if we scroll down a little further, uh, we can see that uh, the image supports multiple architectures, including x86-64, ARM64, and ARMHF. Um, and from there, you can see some more information about that. Uh, below that, there are some tags that you could utilize if you wanted to use something other than XFCE Alpine. Uh, you could use XFCE Ubuntu. Uh, there are uh, KDE options, there are Mate options, i3, OpenBox, IceWM. There are several different options for different desktop styles that you can install in this uh, to get the, the setup that you're most familiar with. Or if you just wanna try out some new things before you commit to something else, this might be a great way to do that as well. So uh, if we scroll down a little further, once it's all set up, uh, you can go to your host. That would be the IP address of your server uh, and go to port 3000. Of course, you can always change that if you need to. If something else is already on port 3000, you can change that to be something else. So uh, if we scroll down a little further, uh, we can also see the default username and password here is ABC ABC. Uh, if you change the password or want to log in manually, um, you can do that. Uh, you'll just wanna make sure that you change your login URL uh, to be this uh, question mark login, login equals true. Uh, scroll down a little further. Um, you may need to run this in privileged mode uh, and, and that actually comes in uh, down here a little further in this Docker Compose. We're gonna do it as a stack, but it's, it's a Docker Compose. Uh, and if we take a look at this, uh, we can see that it's version 2.1. The service will be WebTop. The image will be Linux servers, WebTop. The container name obviously will be WebTop. Uh, here they're saying uh, privileged mode true. This is optional like it says up here. Um, if you need to for specific reasons, the KDE and i3 flavors for Ubuntu need to be run in privileged mode. Uh, so if you're using one of those tags uh, that we've seen uh, uh, up here, uh, if you use one of the appropriate tags, you would need to put the privileged option in there. Otherwise, you can comment that out or remove it. Uh, below that, we've got some environmental variables for PUID, PG ID and time zone. Uh, so this is the user ID and the group ID uh, for your user account. Uh, I use um, uh, Open Media Vault for my servers primarily. Um, so I use, I, I would do uh, the, I would just run ID and then uh, this uh, space and then my username for Open Media Vault. I'll show you that. Uh, below that, we've got a couple of volumes. Uh, we've got one to store the configuration and one to connect with the Docker socket. Uh, again, we've got port 3000 there uh, that you can uh, change if you need to. Uh, the shared memory size by default is one gigabyte, but you can change that if you need to for different reasons, as long as your system has obviously more than one gig. And then restart unless stopped. I would probably change that to always, um, but that is up to you. Um, so if we come over, uh, over to here, uh, we can take a look at how I've already got this set up uh, in my uh, portainer. Uh, just so that we can kind of start over. Some people don't, aren't familiar with Portainer. Uh, let me actually do this first. Uh, so, so what I did to get there, uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I went to my server IP. I tacked on uh, colon 9000. It brought me here. I logged in. And then I went over here to stacks. I clicked on add a stack. And we'll just call this um, uh, web top two, uh, just because like so. And of course, all of this is the same as what I just showed you over here on the uh, the Linux server page, but I did make some changes to it. And I'm gonna make a couple of more while we're here, just so I can show you some different things. Uh, first off, we talked about using some different tags, for instance. So by default, uh, just leaving this blank, that's gonna default to latest, uh, which then will end up using XFC Alpine. Uh, if you wanted to use Ubuntu instead, you could just copy that, come over to here, 
put a colon at the end and paste that in there. Uh, and then that would download the Ubuntu XFCE desktop environment for your instance. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Again, container name, because we're doing it this way, we don't necessarily need the container name in here, but it's there. Uh, for the user ID and the, and the group ID, um, basically the way that works is, again, I use the username uh, admin. So here I am, I've SSH'd into uh, my, my server here. And so I would just type an ID space admin. You would replace admin with whatever username you use to log into your system. And when I hit enter, uh, here we can see UID is 998, GID is 100. Uh, and that's what I've translated over to here. My time zone is uh, close to Denver, so that's what I put. Uh, this web top I'm going to change actually to web top to that's where I'm going to store the configuration file for this system. You can store it wherever you'd like. Uh, this is just kind of my test system. So I just store it in SRV. That works out pretty well for me. Uh, below that, we've got the Docker socket. It says optional. I would leave it. And then below that, we've got port 3000. I'm going to change that to 3001 uh, just because I've already got something using port 3000. And then uh, again, I'm going to leave the shared memory at one gig. Restart, I'm going to switch to always like so, and then I'll just scroll down. Oh, the container, oh, right. It actually told me right there. Uh, so I'm gonna change it to web top two. Now I can scroll down here and click on deploy the stack. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. This will go, should go pretty quickly for me uh, as I've already got the image downloaded. Uh, so we'll give this a second to deploy uh, and there we go. So here I've got web top and web top two. Uh, two is the one we just deployed. And if we take a look, uh, right here, everything looks like it's working just fine. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click back. Uh, if we go over here and take a look uh, at our, our stats, uh, here we can see that it is only using about 180 megs, 170 megs of cache uh, memory, there, or memory and cache, rather. Uh, the CPU has done what it needed to do, and it's not transmitting or receiving anything under here over network usage. So uh, now what we can do is actually go back over here to containers, uh, go over here to WebTop2. Uh, make sure that you've got your endpoint set up. Uh, if you click endpoints over here on the left, go to local and make sure that your public IP is the IP address of your server uh, in order to make uh, the ports over here work. So I'll just click 3001. We'll give this just a second to load up here. And there is that desktop. And of course, so from here, you should be able to do basically anything you need to do uh, with regards to managing your server. Uh, you may have to try some different configurations in order to get things to work. Uh, you may have to change to a different user uh, or, or make sure that your user has the permissions that it needs in order to do the things you want to do on your server here. So if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It really does help me out quite a bit. Again, all of this will be linked in the description down below. Uh, while you're down there, there are a couple of different ways you can support the channel, whether it's through coffee or Patreon or whatever. Uh, there will be a link in the description where you can choose to do that if you'd like. And I do want to give a big shout out to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you guys so much uh, for your support. I really, really do appreciate it. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.